Good morning, NOBTS. Let's all stand together. Today, we're, our uh, chapel service is going to look a little different. It's a prayer service, but let's all sing out together first.
good to be with, with you here in chapel today, our last chapel of the fall semester. And you may not be aware, but this week, Operation Christmas Child is collecting shoe boxes. And New Orleans Baptist Seminary and Level College is the, uh, the drop-off location for all of Metro New Orleans. And so they collect shoe boxes at churches. Those churches gather them and bring them to other drop-off locations and they bring them here, the, the central drop-off location. And then on Monday, we'll collect all the shoe boxes from this area, from Metro New Orleans, and send them to Texas to go out to all of the world. And over the last 30 years, almost 30 years, Operation Cl Christmas Child has collected 188 million shoe boxes and shared that throughout the world. And you say, well, that's, that's nice, shoe boxes with small gifts, trinkets, toys for these kids in 170 different nations. That's wonderful. But what does that really mean for us as the church? Well, the encouraging news is that with every one of those shoe boxes that goes out, the gospel goes with it. And so that's 188 million gospel conversations, uh, pre presentations that have been shared over the last nearly 30 years. And this year, Operation Christmas Child is hoping to have 9.7 million shoe boxes. They're, they're, they're planning for that. We expect and anticipate, and we're praying to have 10,000 of those shoe boxes come through in OBTS and Level College. And we wanted to make this our missionary moment because as we prepare here to serve anywhere, as we plan to take the gospel into the nations, we can already begin that process by packing toys, trinkets, and clothes into shoe boxes so that these kids will have gifts and understand Christmas isn't just about these gifts, but they can receive the greatest gift, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And so as we are collecting shoe boxes, I want you to pray. Pray for the, the shoe boxes that are going out, the gospel that is accompanying it, the people who are delivering those all over the world, even in closed countries, and in fact, for the people who are packing the shoe boxes and the churches they represent. So would you pray with me now? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your gift of salvation that you give to us. Father, we thank you so much that though we don't deserve it, you thought highly enough of us that you loved us and showed that love that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And Father, that we can do something like partnering together with Samaritan's Purse to take your good news to fulfill that commission that you gave to us by packing shoe boxes and sending them with the gospel out into the world. Father, we pray for those shoe boxes that are collected. We pray for the, the children who are gonna receive it, that they'll, they'll derive joy from the, the toys and the, the, the gifts that there. But more than that, we pray, Lord, that you would be proceed this gift with your Holy Spirit and open and prepare their hearts so that they would hear the good news of Jesus Christ and that they would understand the gift that you give. Father, we ask that you would bless those who are preparing shoe boxes all across the United States. Bless those who are collecting shoe boxes and packing them and putting them in cartons, putting them on trailers. We pray, Lord, even for the truck drivers who will be delivering the shoe boxes to the distribution centers. Lord, we ask that, uh, that you would honor the gifts that are given and multiply them so that your kingdom will expand and grow. So Lord, that at, at the end of the day, at the end of this year, when, when these kids are hearing the, the gospel, Lord, at the end of the, our mission and our journey here, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Father, we pray that those voices who are bowing and worshiping Jesus are doing that joyfully. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for the privilege of serving you here in New Orleans and wherever we may be called to serve. 
thank you for the great love that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you be seated, please? Can I use this? 
Well, I'm Dr. Talbert. It's my joy to lead us in a prayer time this morning. Uh, our president has led us to understand that our mission at NOBTS and Level College is to prepare servants to walk with Christ, proclaim his truth, and fulfill his mission. So those four components are servanthood, devotion, proclamation, and missions. We've had a missions moment already, but the focus of our service this morning is going to be on that second component, and that is devotion. So we're going to give this time over to prayer this morning. Of course, next week is Thanksgiving, and that's a season where we give thanks for who God is and what he has done. We give thanks to God for people that he's brought into our life. But I want to lead us this morning in what I want to call a season of prayer in three different types of prayer. And now this is going to be group participation this morning, okay? Uh, I'm going to be leading us, but I'm going to ask you to join with us as we focus in on three different types of praying. The first type is what I want to call desperate praying. I've discovered in my life that I pray a lot better when I'm desperate. When I'm in a time of desperation, I tend to pray more often. There's a passage in 2 Corinthians where the Apostle Paul talked about his prayer life during a desperate time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, he said, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. And then he said, Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. And then he said, Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I'm well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The truth of the matter is, we're always desperate. We're always desperate for the Lord. Our next breath is dependent upon the Lord. And so we need to understand that, that we're desperate for the Lord in every season. The psalmist said, it was good for me that I was afflicted, for then I learned your statutes. He went on to say, arise, O Lord, lift up your hand, and do not forget the afflicted. So I'm going to ask you in just a moment to turn with someone near you, and I want us to just have a moment or two of, of desperate praying. Pray about the things in your life where you're weak, where you're desperate for the Lord to touch you in some area of your life. Or maybe, maybe you need to pray for others that are desperate, for others that are desperate for the Lord. You may have someone, maybe a loved one, maybe a friend who's going through a very desperate time. Or here's, how about this? How about we pray for those that are desperate for the gospel, for those that have never had an opportunity to know Christ. The Apostle Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them is for their salvation, for the unreached people groups of the world. So I'm just going to ask you to turn in your seat, bow your head, and we're going to enter into a few moments of desperate praying, areas where you're desperate or praying for others that you know that desperately need a touch from the Lord. Let's go before the Lord in prayer.
we begin, begin closing this time of prayer in just a moment now. I'm going to ask Cal Perry to come now and voice this collective prayer of desperation for the Lord. Father God, we do love you. And Lord, there may be times in our life where heartache and difficulty and despair may be in our lives. And Lord God, I pray that in in those times we can so desperately cling to you. That Lord, in our studies, in our lives, in our ministries, in our families, Lord God, I pray that in every aspect of our lives that we allow you to work in amongst us. That we allow you to go before us. And Lord God, that we desperately, desperately cling to you. The author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, I pray that whether we be on the mountaintop or in the low valley, that we can see through your eyes and feel through your heart and that we can be desperate for you in our lives, that we can have joy and peace and thanksgiving and that we can cling to you and your salvation. And Lord God, in the times where we feel that we don't have desperation, Lord, Make us aware to just how desperate we are for you. Let us always cling to you. And may you always guide and direct everything that we do for the glory of your kingdom and for your honor and for your praise, all, whether it be a word or deed, for the glory of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray.
So we want to be desperate prayers, understanding that we're always desperate for the Lord. Another season of prayer that I want to lead us into now is persistent praying, continuing to pray over a long stretch of time for things that are on our heart, not just a, not just a, a one-time prayer and moving on, but continually praying. There are some things that require persistence in life, like dieting. I went on a diet one day and it didn't work, so I quit. Or exercising, one day of exercising is of very little value. Prayer requires persistence. We're coming into the Christmas season. Undoubtedly, we're gonna be reading Luke chapter two in our churches and in our homes. But I wanna give you the backstory to Luke chapter two. It's Luke chapter one. Before the birth of Jesus came the forerunner, John the Baptist. And we read about a persistent prayer there in the first chapter of Luke. Listen to this, this is incredible. Now it happened that while he was performing his priestly service before God in the important division of his order, according to the custom of the priestly office, Zacharias, Zacharias was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and to burn incense. And when the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside, the hour of the incense offering, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar. Zacharias was troubled when he saw the angel and fear gripped him, but the angel said to him, now listen to this, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will give him the name John and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. Now that was not the prayer Zacharias had necessarily been praying that day. Zacharias and Elizabeth had been praying for years, probably decades for a child. No child had come. You go on and read in Luke chapter one, you'll discover that they were, they were advanced in years and John even wondered how, or Zacharias wondered how could this be because of their advanced age. But the interesting thing is that idea, your prayer has been heard the answer came later, but God heard their prayer over all those years. Now, if God had answered Zacharias and Elizabeth's prayer immediately, they would have had a baby, but it would have just been another little Hebrew boy. God delayed that answer so that he could give them John the Baptist. Their prayer was heard way back yonder, and the angel came to announce the final answer to it. Let me just encourage you this morning to think about those, maybe those prayers that you used to pray that you sort of quit praying. People for whom you used to pray that you've sort of quit praying. You've got to continue on a pathway. One of my favorite scriptures is Proverbs 4.18. I love this promise. It says, but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter under the full day. When we start following Jesus, it's just a little glimmer of light. It's just sun up. So what do you do? You walk, you walk in that light. Follow the path. God gives you more light. There's a particular person that I've been praying for for over 40 years that she would come to faith in Christ. I talked to her on the phone yesterday. She's going to be having open heart surgery this month. I am continuing, not only in a desperate prayer, but a persistent prayer for her to come to faith in Christ. Some of you have been praying for situations to change, for God to show you his will, for him to direct your steps, maybe in seminary or maybe after seminary. So this morning, I wanna, I wanna call you back to those things that you used to pray for, that you need to start praying for again. Waiting for God to finally give you the answer. Your prayer has been heard, don't stop praying. So again, would you bow your head and would you bow, join with a neighbor and just think, what is it I need to resume my prayers for? What pathway do I need to continue to pursue in persistent prayer? Let's go before the Lord in some persistent, long-term prayer right now.
begin closing this season of prayer. And I'm going to ask Elena Robinette to come and voice her. Father, we are in awe of you. There are no words to describe how grateful we are that you let us approach your throne. And Father, we ask you to give us urgency to do that. Father, that you would remind us of your promises. May we never take your silence for rejection, but may we be persistent in our prayers to you, Lord. May we remember to lift up our brothers and our sisters, that we would lay down our burdens to you, that we would give our desires to you, Father, that you would work mightily in our hearts, that we would be a people that talks to you, Lord, that we would not neglect our time with you, but that we would hold that close, that throughout each day that we would draw close to you, Father. Please move mightily in our campus, Lord. Help us to impact our community for you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name, amen.
been reminded this morning of those seasons of prayer when we're desperate or when we recognize how desperate we are for the Lord. Let me encourage you to be a desperate prayer and to be persistent. Don't stop praying. Continue to pray for those things God has burdened your heart with. But then there's another way that we're to pray that maybe is not necessarily a season and it's what I call instant praying where we are to be ready to pull that trigger at any moment and pray to the Lord. Let, let me share a tremendous passage. It's in the book of Nehemiah. It's Nehemiah chapter 2. You'll remember the story. Nehemiah had come back and he had seen the walls of Jerusalem broken down and, and he was in anguish before the Lord probably for about three months. Nehemiah chapter 1 covers a period of about three months where Nehemiah is praying persistently before the Lord. But then he has his moment. His moment comes and it's recorded in chapter 2. And here's what it says. And it came about in the month of Nisan. That's another month later. In the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, wine was set before him. And he took up the wine. He gave it to the king. And then Nehemiah said, Now I had not been sad in his presence. You didn't want to do that before the king. And the king said to me, Why is your face sad though you're not sick? There's nothing but sadness of heart. And Nehemiah said, then I was very much afraid. And I said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies desolate and its gates have been consumed with fire? Now listen to this verse. Then the king said to me, what would you request? And the scripture says, so I prayed to the God of heaven and said to the king. Now that's a quick prayer. That is a quick prayer. He says, I prayed to the God of heaven and answered the king. Now, he'd been praying for three or four months, but now his moment comes, and he sends up this, this instant prayer. It's what I call sending up a prayer flare. You don't necessarily have to stop and bow your head to pray. You can pray instantly. You can pray while you're driving down the, down the road. You know, Jesus said, watch and pray, right? So you can send up a prayer flare. Let me encourage you in instant praying. If someone comes up to you and says, you know, I've got something going on in my life, it's a good thing to say, I'm going to pray for you. But it's a better thing to say, hey, what if we do this? What if we just stop and pray right now? I got a message about a month ago that one of my heroes, Dr. Robert Smith Jr., who's preached here, had a massive stroke. A friend told me that. I immediately picked up the phone and called Dr. Smith visited with him over the phone at the end of our conversation. I said, Dr. Smith, could I just pray for you right now? He said, I would really appreciate that. So I prayed for my friend. Five or six hours later, he called me back. He said, Dr. Mark, I just want to call you and thank you for praying for me. Thank you that you just said, didn't say you were going to pray for me. You prayed for me. We were driving home from the Alabama Baptist Convention yesterday and there was a big wreck on the interstate. We had to get off the interstate and take a detour. Traffic was backed up for miles. My wife and I, rather than just getting annoyed, we said, let's, let's pray for those folks in that rack. Glad we weren't in it. Let's pray for them. And so we did that. So I want to challenge you. Spend those times of seasons of prayer, persistent prayer, but be ready to pray. And the next time someone says, boy, there's a lot going on in my life, why don't you do this? Why don't you say, well, let's just pray right now. Uh, don't, don't tell them you're going to pray and then forget. 
Now you got to repent of lying, okay? Just stop and pray right then. Those instant prayers. So I want to encourage you this morning. I, I've been encouraged as I've prepared to share this with you today. I want to be a desperate prayer because I'm always desperate. And I want to be a persistent prayer. Continue praying for those things God has laid on my heart. And I want to be an instant prayer that I can just pray on the spot, eyes open, eyes closed. Pray to the God of heaven and then do what God tells you to do. So would you bow your head for prayer with me? I want to pray for you right now. Lord, thank you for calling us together today in this communion of your children. And I want to pray for these that are here before me and those that are watching online. God, I pray whatever's going on in their life, that you'll give them kingdom eyes as they go forward. And when they see you at work or when they see need around them, Lord, that we'll be instant to pray, immediate to pray. Maybe that's what praying without ceasing is, is having those instant on-the-spot prayers. And then, Lord, as the Apostle Paul prayed for his church at Ephesus, I want to pray for these before us here today that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of His power toward us who believe. In the strong and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. So oh.